Hi everyone, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett here. Thanks for joining us for today's episode where we talk about an update to Parks and Recreation and the Farmington Outdoor Pledge. Hi everyone, Farmington Mayor Nate Duckett here for another exciting episode of The Mayor's Table. With me today I have four, uh, three guests from our community. I have Alan Elmore. Alan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me again, man. Yep, Dale Davis. Thanks, thanks for having me. Absolutely, and Shauna Rees, our Parks and Recreation Director. Thanks for being here. Thanks guys, thanks you for got, letting me come along. Yeah, well you guys may not know this or not, but Shauna helped put on and facilitate The Mayor's Tables for many, many years from its inception with Greg. Alan uh, and Mayor Tommy Roberts, and now, of course, you're the head of Parks and Recreation, so it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a little update on Parks and Recreation, kind of what we've been doing the past year or so, uh, and then I wanted to talk to Alan and Dale as representatives of our off-road community and our mountain bike community. I wanted to talk about Farmington's Outdoor Pledge um, and kind of the components that go along with that, so appreciate you guys being here. Uh, I want to kick it off with Shauna. Shauna, We've seen a lot of stuff happening here with parks and recreation, at the lake, at Bistai Bay, river trails, different things. Uh, what have you guys been working on lately? Whew. Well, we've had a busy spring and a busy summer. Um, we, uh, out here, out at Lake Farmington, we did quite a bit of more amenities. We added the shade. So we have the shade at the beach, and now we have shades over here at the campground, and they're nice. We've already had a lot of compliments. Um, we were able to get them right in for the uh, Labor Day camping, so that was fun. Um, we had great attendance out of the beach this year. We had nearly 10,000 people wow. out here. Yeah, that's great. So it was we're nice still to doing have... the season passes for people who want to have the season pass to come out here, right? We are, and I'll tell you, it, it's the way to go. <laughs> and we're looking. I think too, it's important for people. To know, we're looking at some other additional things out here at the lake, like the possibility of opening it up Absolutely. for swimming anywhere on the lake, and that's mm -hmm. something we're we're currently going through the process of considering. But um, opening up Lake Farmington in 2014 was kind of the impetus that kicked off our outdoor recreation push uh, and able to bring people out here, the campground now, the beach over there, and Dale, of course, and Alan, we've, we've connected in or, or going to be connecting in an OHV and mountain bike trail, which the BLM will be uh, connecting to here soon as well. So mm -hmm. trying to make this a place where anybody who wants to be outside, I mean, there's bird watching, there's paddle boarding, there's swimming, there's you know, all these different things to do. And now to tie in OHV and mountain bike, I think is going to be a, a critical component as well. Um, but 10,000 people, that's a lot of folks. And I, I think absolutely. we continue to see that grow as more people come to Farmington and recognize this as a place where they can spend their weekends, uh, not just shopping, but find a hotel, find a campground, um, and, and spend some time here. So yeah. that's excellent. Uh, some other things going on, of course, at Bistai Bay, we've just put the slides up. Is that right? We have. They are almost in. I mean, if, from all intent and purposes, if you're driving by, they look complete. There's just minor tweaks. So uh, that's going to be very exciting next year. Uh, we had really in this first season an incredible attendance at 23,000, 23,300 ish people uh, came through there. So I'm very excited about that. I think the community is very excited. What I love is that people loved it as it was and they're gonna love it even more with the slides coming in. So. I think it's definitely gonna provide some balance um, there in the facility. Of course, the Lazy River was a pretty big, big attraction, but now we'll have that other side, be able to have kids go down those two slides. And maybe you can talk a little bit about the slides. There's two slides there, correct? There are two slides. One is an open flume and one is a, a an enclosed tube. So you get two different experiences. You know, if you don't really like being in enclosed surfaces, you might not wanna go in that one, but uh, they're both uh, curly cues. One is about 184 feet, and the other one is, um, I believe, around the 136 mark. I okay. Don't quote me on that, but they're in that range there, and so they'll be fast and exciting. But, you know, you talked about Lake Farmington and kind of the evolution that we're going through um, with making this a destination. I think that's going to be true for all of the projects that we've, you know, really come through, and Vista Bay is no different from that. Not only will we have the slides, but uh, we had a lot of uh, requests this year for special programming. And we've got an exciting list of programs that we are going to work in um, times that are outside of the public swimming times that will really allow a lot of different people uh, to come and enjoy that facility. So I'm pretty great. excited about that. You know, one of the things we're working on out there is we continue to push Farmington as a place where outdoor lovers can thrive. We've uh, also began construction on the pickleball courts. We certainly have. Um, at Brookside Park, which when I first was elected mayor, I had 
a group of uh, senior games, people who were part of the senior games came to me and said, we need an outdoor facility to play pickleball. They've got them all over the place and we want to have tournaments. And so I was really proud nice. of council for kind of stepping up on that end and providing that type of amenity as well. And I'll tell you that community is watching it. They're very excited. They're <laughs> down there working side by side with Doug. They've, they're already getting excited about tournaments. And so we're, we're happy to have them on board and that project is coming along nicely. Well, this will be something good for people who love the river. The river's been uh, a focal point here over the past four years as, as the city has gone through and purchased much of the river trail land needed to connect all the way from where uh, Pinion Hills Extension Bridge would be all the way down to Among the Waters, which is out going towards 371, towards uh, uh, towards Sota Behavioral Health in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so this September, I know we kicked off some additional construction on that. Where, where, where's that at right now? So we're very excited. We in in-house have divided that trail into thirds. Uh, so the first third has been staked and cleared and we are getting ready to, um, it's being bladed right now as we speak. And then we will put the crusher finds on top and we are moving into the second third of that trail, which is a uh, higher elevation. So it's a little bit more uh, meticulous work, but we're very excited. And then the third half of that will connect us to the Murray Bridge. And we'll, we have some lighting in uh, that third quarter of that trail, but that will be complete and open this spring. That's awesome. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's, it's actually a very beautiful trail. It I'm really excited is. to see it. I can't wait to see it. It's we may do a full morning. episode just on that as well as we continue to see that expand. And make sure we're showing people the things that are going on in those places. We had a recent update too from our Farmington Police Department on our Park Ranger Division uh, that's, that's just now been kicked off getting some very positive remarks on their ability to address citizens' concerns. They're working hand-in-hand -hand with businesses in downtown. They're out in the parks and they're very visible. They wear the bright yellow uh, police uniforms and they're on bikes, they're on foot. So as we see a lot of those amenities grow, we want people to know that they're safe and there's people that are available to assist as needed. Very cool. Very nice. happy with that. Now for, for Dale and, and Alan, uh, obviously as we're, we're looking and working and have been working with the BLM, with uh, Glade Run Recreation Area, and, and I know they've been working on Alien Run. We've just seen the BLM install the pavilion mm -hmm. at the entrance to the Glade off of Pinion Hills Boulevard. We've obviously seen the investment that they've made in the Brown Springs Campground. Uh, they're doing some additional things at Alien Run and Aztec and at the Bistai Badlands south of town. We're really fortunate, I think, in this moment, in this time, the type of synergy that's been created uh, with, with the county, the BLM, the city, and the user groups. And the user groups are what's really, to me, is, is the, the, the cream of the, the LA, de la creme. I don't know how to say that. But without a good, solid, engaged user base mm -hmm. who are out there advocating for these trails and are working with uh, local government to make them better, we don't, we're not going to see what we want to truly see here. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you to you two for, for your, your, what you've done. Uh, your role within your groups to assist in that. And one of the things I wanted to bring you guys today to talk about was the Outdoor Pledge. And the Outdoor Pledge is something that came um, came to me a couple years ago from a friend who was visiting Bend, Oregon in that area. And Bend's done a lot of work within their community on outdoor recreation. Dale and I had an opportunity to hear some of that um, here at the New Mexico Outdoor Recreations Conference. But I wanted to bring something like this forward for our, our community because we, we live in a place where the Grade Run Glade Run Recreation Area has multi-use all over it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's it's got OHV, it's got Jeep, which is a component of OHV, but a little bit different in some aspects. Mm -hmm. You have uh, mountain biking, you've got dirt biking, you've got horseback riding, you've got trail running, um, all of those things going on out there and trying to bring people together to say, look, we, we can get along and we can enjoy these trails together. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of this outdoor recreation pledge is, is a component of that. Absolutely. So I wanted to share that today with our with our viewers and just kind of break it down. And I think Greg will have will throw something up on the screen that kind of shows this. But let me just read this. This is Farmington's out, Outdoor Recreation Pledge. <coughs> Whether a resident or a visitor, take the pledge to preserve Farmington's treasured shared spaces and leave them better than you found them for the next guest. First item up here, guys, is enjoy outdoors with all. I will be friendly, courteous, and respectful towards those encountered on public lands. That should go without saying, right? Sure. It should. Right? And it's not just in the trails, Shauna. It's also in our parks where mm -hmm. we've got playgrounds or we've got baseball fields. I mean, we should all be respectful and, and, and allow other people to enjoy those areas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that, too, there's just some basic courtesies. You know, when you're out recreating, uh, if, you've, if you've got an animal, you know, and and you need to have it on lead. It doesn't mean that you can have a 15-foot lead and, and let it wander and, 
uh, passing, you know, when you're a mountain biker, if you come up on someone, you know, on your right, on your left, little things like that are also in this, you know, enjoy it with all those little, those little courtesies make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. They do. Not, not being in a hurry helps a lot too. Uh, we, we run trails in Moab. Some of these trails are designated for mountain bikes and Jeeps. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go at different paces. I mean, obviously mountain bikes are going for speed a lot of the time and, and Jeeps are not. We're, we're out there tooling up rocks and stuff like that. So sometimes just stopping and just letting some mountain bikes come through, it's mm -hmm. not that big of a deal. It doesn't ruin your day. It doesn't make the trail any longer. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it only takes a second. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Second item on here says follow the rules. I will adhere to the designated instructions and postings, use areas for intended purposes, and keep, keep safety and preservation top of mind. Dale, when we talk about things like that, what, come, what comes to your mind? Well, you know, I think a big part of that is, uh, you know, we're creating the th these things. Um, we're trying to build these things for our community and also to bring people into our community. Um, if we don't take care of these things and we don't keep them sustainable, they're not going to last. Um, so, you know, I think a big part of that is that, is, is, is follow the rules. Follow, stay on the paths. Uh, keep your bikes on the trail, keep your cells on the trail, keep your OHVs on the trail. Um, because if we don't, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tear everything up and, and it's not going to be there for the next generation. No, that's right. We talk about that a lot. Uh, we talk about a lot, of, especially now when we get into these outdoor recreation conferences and discussions about sustainability. And maintaining the land is a real critical component of that so that it is here and it is in that pristine type shape for the next generations to come and enjoy. But I also think as people come into our communities, we're inviting them in and we're telling them that they can jolt their journey right here in Farmington, is they're able to go out there and have that experience that they think they're going to have. Right. And I think if the locals are already doing the things the right way, following the rules um, and enjoying outdoors with all, then, then those visitors are also going to experience in that way as well. We want to jolt their journey in a good way, not a bad way. That's, that's right. That's for exactly right. That's right. Uh, be a good neighbor. Uh, take care of adjacent land and property in hopes that private property owners continue to graciously share it. That's a biggie. It is a biggie, and many people don't know, but part of Kinsey Trail is on private land. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot of private land out there being utilized. And so it's it's really important on, for us as users to ensure that we're respecting it and we're taking care of it and that they continue to allow us to have access to it because without that, we've got to find new trails. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, yeah, true, even for the river trails. As we're building among the water, it goes right by residents. And they were gracious enough to allow us to build a trail and we're walking past their backyards. Right. And so it is, it is good to be neighborly. That's a very valid point. Uh, be well prepared. I will seek adventure, but prepare for the unexpected. Mm -hmm. I think about the Bistai Badlands when I think about this kind of component in my mind is that you go prepared for the unexpected. So you're, you put a proper pack together when you go out on that trail um, and, and don't leave things behind that you know you're going to need. Mm -hmm so that you don't put yourself or maybe the others who are with you at risk. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. As Jeepers, we, we always carry tools, first aid kits, spill kits, I mean, in case you spill oil or something on the ground, um, recovery kits, etc. food and water. And, and it's not always for yourself. It's you know, not, it's, it's a lot of times you're gonna run into somebody it. else out there that's needing that or, Absolutely. or is, is come into a bind, yep. so. Honestly, I, I rarely use my winch for myself, you know? Well, it's, yeah. it's usually for other people. Yep. Safety first and always. I will always maintain a safe speed, refrain from unnecessary risk, and use proper restraints and safety equipment for the passengers and myself. Mm -hmm. take, care, take care of yourself and those who are with you. Yeah. Right? Uh, leave no trace. I think this is an important one. It's uh, I don't know. We, we talk about this, uh, Alan, with uh, the cliffhangers and waste management and BLM twice a year. Mm -hmm. You guys put together these great canyon cleanups. Mm -hmm. And if we had all had the mind mentality of leave no trace, uh, we wouldn't have to go out there and do these huge No, we wouldn't. It wouldn't be necessary. Yeah. We could use our time maybe developing trails or mm -hmm. doing some other components that would be of use in there. But leave no trace. I'll stick to designated trails and leave them as pristine mm -hmm. as I have found them uh, by carrying out trash and refraining from starting fires mm -hmm. where fires shouldn't be. Obviously, we're here at the lake. Right. We have campground fire pits set up here. And we've, we've worked hard with BLM. He's worked hard with BLM as well to come out there and mark trails and make sure people know where the trails are and where they go. That way, if somebody... I, I think the hope is that if somebody shows up in Farmington on a whim or is just driving through town and goes, whoa, there's a sign that says jeeping over here, they can pull off, unload their jeep or unload their mountain bikes and find a way out there, right. you know, without without destroying nature and I think the aesthetics out, of, of the canyon. You know? We put out like 20,000 Carsonite signs a couple, over a, a two year period of which 50% of those were taken down by people just destroying them. 
Yeah. You know, and that's something where we talk about the need for our outdoor pledges, the community taking ownership of what's out there, understand why those signs are there. Right. It's there to make sure that we are able to enjoy it and find it and, and not have to guess where it's at. So I think a lot of that comes to education. I, yeah. That's what I was going to say. It would be nice to integrate this into the school system. Absolutely. And for anybody utilizing, anybody purchasing an OHV or even yeah. purchasing a mountain bike. Purchasing a mountain there's bike. There's a basic handbook on yep. how do you, how do you, what is the proper way to utilize this in public lands? Yeah. Because that's, that is the key for us. We have so much public land here. And I think, I'll just talk from my own ignorance. I got an OHV eight years ago and I was like, great, I can go anywhere I want to go. Yeah. And I was completely ignorant about it. Mm -hmm. And I think if there was a component that said, look, you can't go where you want to go. Right? I mean, it's got, you know, Smokey the Bear or some, yeah, some simple one that you know, I have to watch. It says, no, you must follow these rules. Yeah. Sure. I think it's really critical. But, I mean, if there's a trail that goes like this, you might as well just take the trail that goes like this instead of cutting across. I mean, sure. right. Absolutely. You're, you're out there for the view and for the ride anyway. Not, sure. not to be a Strava time. Yeah. 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 Respect the experience. Uh, respect and leave designated cultural, archaeological, geographic, environmental conservation areas as I found them for future generations to enjoy. That has so much precedent here in our area where, where there are uh, Navajo defensive sites and different things that are all over the place. Yeah. There's ruins everywhere yep. in our canyons. Um, and, and they're there for us to view, they're there for us to see, they're not there for us to destroy. Yep. Um, same thing I, I feel in the Bista. I had somebody bring up today the fact that you know it concerns me that we're trying to attract people out there, but you know those hoodoos aren't going to be there forever if people are walking on them. Correct. So we need to have that understanding that they're there to see Maybe they're there to touch, but they're there not to not to take home with you. They're there not to not to destroy. Absolutely. And that's a lot of things. That, you know, it goes back to staying on the trail. There's a reason why we have a trail. Uh, I don't know if you guys have walked the trail behind the college, but at a portion that's close to Pinion Hills and College, that intersection, there's a little sign, and they've tried to do it like a cutesy thing, and it says, "Don't bust the crust." Well, there is some dirt there that's kind of blackened and and it looks crusty. That dirt is dirt that hasn't been disturbed for like hundreds of years. And so they want to preserve that because it's unusual and it's been designated and it's very close to the trail. So if you walk the college trail, there's a reason that we want to preserve these things. Well, I think that's where the education comes in too, because yeah, uh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. They, didn't they talk a lot about it in Moab. Um, so <coughs> when we were kids, we used to pick them up because they were like dirt clods and you Absolutely. could throw them and, and knock each other out with them or whatever. But <laughs> but it's it's small plant life growing on top of this on top of the dirt, and it's the first step in making soil that's suitable for uh, other ground cover plants, oh, wow. you, mm -hmm. you know, grasses and trees and stuff Very to grow. Cool. I learned because stuff our, today. Our our <laughs> soil is pretty. It, it's pretty depleted as far as nutrients go, but this is the first step in getting nutrients into the soil mm -hmm. and you got to kind of leave it alone. So if you see, it, it's almost kind of a black ground covering. Mm -hmm. Just walk around it. Yeah. Yeah. Be kind to signs. I talked about that a second ago, right? Uh -huh. we, had a, we had a vandalism incident happen out at Brown Springs mm -hmm. here a few months ago and I'm happy to report that through some investigation the BLM actually busted. Uh, the individuals who tore down those signs. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. I, I think it's important for people to know that when it comes to dumping or when it comes to vandalism, people are paying attention now yeah. and they're being held accountable for it. So just don't do it. I'd, I'd like to speak to something on this, if you don't mind. Um, I'm, I'm a shooter. I, I like guns. I like going out and shooting guns. Um, it looks really bad for our community. Um, you know, our, our user group, we'll just say that shooters are a user group. It looks really bad for shooters when you go out and there's signs everywhere with bullet holes in them. Couldn't agree I mean, more. It looks terrible for us. Couldn't agree more. And they shut off areas to shooting here for that very reason. Mm -hmm. And it's become more and more limited where you can go out and shoot in public lands here. And a lot of it's because of that, you know. Um, and we do have places, we do have uh, an organization here in the community that has, you have to be a member to go uh -huh. shoot out there. But range. certainly, I think as an entrepreneur opportunity, uh -huh. a shooting range is needed here. Yes, it is. And a shooting range would be really nice in yeah. Farmington. Take note of that. Be great. Uh, keep animals safe. Mm -hmm. Talked about that a little bit earlier. I will take appropriate measures to keep my animals safe when encountered by fellow motorists, bikers, equestrians, or hikers. Um, and be an ambassador. I will share my knowledge of and enthusiasm for Farmington's outdoor recreation resources with friends and family far and wide so they can enjoy them too. I think anybody that loves the area here does that automatically. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. And that's what we've been pushing this whole time. And education really emboldens people to become ambassadors because they understand the rules. They understand that I have a role to play here and trying to help other people enjoy them the way that I know that they're supposed to be enjoyed. Yeah. 
Um, we see that and often I will get conversations happening with people who say, well, I saw somebody doing something and I walked over and I told them, hey, make sure on this part of the trail, you guys need to go this way and or over saying here. Saying something. Yeah, saying something. Being, being an educator. And being yeah. kind it, about In a positive it. way yeah, too. Being kind yeah, about it. Yeah, you don't have to way. throw rocks at them or anything. Yeah. No. So I think, mm -hmm. gentlemen, and, and Sean, I think this is a really good, just a really good uh, basic plan of how we should be treating and acting and treating um, outdoor recreation amenities here in our community. And it allows us to kind of grow from this and utilize this as, a, as an ambassador to go out and say, hey, this is why we do the things we do and why we choose to do it the right way and not the wrong way, because it makes the experience better for everybody. It does. I agree. It does. Right. Anything you guys would like to add before we close out this episode of the Mayor's Table? I think I'm good. Thank you. Alan? Yeah. Dale? Um, no, a lot of positive things going on. Yes. Um, you know, we've got the BMX track we're trying to put in. Absolutely. Um, so um, uh, we are looking for uh, folks to help with that. Uh, need equipment uh, to bring in dirt, you know, trucks, equipment to move it, all those things. So, um, you know, get a hold of Action BMX on that. That would be awesome. They have a Facebook page set up right now. They do. So Action BMX is the name of that. Uh, group and they are looking for volunteers and, and donations so certainly reach out to them great point Sean? I just think um, I'm so excited to be here with you all I mean just to see the community collaboration going on um, it is it is unusual to come to a town that is this united and in, in an effort that is really this viable for us so I always enjoy being around you guys and being able to talk about these things a couple more interesting things I just like to let our community know about is our letter of interest that we have out we have three of them out uh, we have one out for the their public-private partnerships with the city, and we are looking to see interest out there. Uh, we've got one out for here, like Farmington, in regards to um, the zip line zip and, and the aerial adventures type things. Uh, we also have another one out for cabins that would be here. These are cabins that would be placed on our land over by the beach area. Um, they're shells, and they have a bed, but they're, they're super cool. It's a totally different type of camping than, than where we are right here. but. Um, very, a great opportunity for public-private partnerships. And then our third one, of course, is um, a letter of interest regarding the, the um, land that is west of the museum. Yes. So we're looking for a development there. And I just think there are so many exciting things that, that we could probably talk all day, but thanks for having me here with you all. Absolutely. Exciting time to be here in Farmington. We appreciate you tuning in here to the Mayor's Table. Join us on, for the next episode. We're going to be talking about the Civic Center and the great events coming up over the next year as we try and grow entertainment here in the city of Farm. Thanks for joining us today.